Pet Life Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Save a Pooch on Pet Life Radio. Thank you for listening in today. I am Beverly Inzla, your host. Our special guest today is Animal Intuitive Callie Kellum, a facilitator at Lightbody Academy. A mission of hers is to bridge the gap between humans and animals, offering a multi-dimensional perspective on our relationship with the natural world, as well as a relationship with self through the lens of the animal kingdom. So that's such an interesting perspective in my view. So today, she will be sharing her story and insights into how we can all deepen our connections with the animals in our lives. So Callie, as mentioned, takes a holistic perspective on this topic, which brings it that much more depth. So when we get back from these messages, we will hear from Animal Intuitive Callie Kellum. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Save a Pooch. We are talking with Callie Kellum, animal communicator and intuitive. Thank you for taking the time today to share with us your journey and story in respect to animal communications. And I really, really appreciate the depth that you bring to it. Thank you. Point the story. <laughs> so let's start with that. Let's start with the journey into animal communications. When did you first realize you have this ability? Oh, well, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting question because I feel like there are definitely people who are born with special gifts and abilities, you know, people who embody certain like, archetypes of like the intuitive healer, um, you know, gifted mediums, psychics. And um, there's also people, I also believe that people in general do have these innate you know, extra sensory perceptions and we're often just trained out of them. But uh, for people like me, um, I'll say I do have a natural propensity for this kind of thing, but it didn't just come natural for me. I've, I've had to, you know, put in my time and really focus and through experience and intention, uh, honing these abilities. But if I'm really kind of get some perspective on myself, even as a child, I had just kind of a, a natural rapport with animals. When I was a kid, everywhere I go, animals would come up to me. Even, you know, dogs or horses that were kind of standoffish in general would come straight up to me and would often shock people. And to be like, that being said, maybe I did have more of a gift than I been getting giving myself credit for. Like my sister was all about baby dolls and I was all about stuffed animals and, and animal figures and stuff. So it's kind of always been a part of me. But it wasn't until probably my late 20s, early 30s that I even became aware of the term animal communicator. And I kind of wrote that off as being kind of a silly idea, honestly. <laughs> and so, yeah, kind of my, my practical side of, you know, I, I grew up in cowboy country and that kind of thing was just considered nonsense. But as I kind of kept having experiences and meeting other people that had these different perspectives, it started to really blossom. And it's it's still blossoming. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I definitely have my, my own sure. approach. And that and yeah, that's been something that I've been learning to embrace because 
But there are people who teach animal communication and it's easy to kind of fall in line with other people's approaches. But I'm starting to realize that this kind of thing is kind of like a fingerprint. There's really a natural signature involved with it. No, I can imagine there are a ton of classes going on with that topic. So it's interesting that how you're going to evolve with it. Like you live in a farm, correct, right now? So you have like a ton of, you, what do you have? You have horses, you have dogs, you have, yeah. um, <laughs> at one point, I remember you showed, if you rescued a, uh, oh my, is it a fox? Oh, yeah. It was yeah. a fox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had a little baby fox friend for a while. That's awesome. Yeah. It was actually, I had a unique upbringing because I wasn't totally rural, but I lived in a little tiny town and was always rescuing you know, orphan birds and rodents and, and stuff like that. But where I do live now, I wouldn't call it a farm, but there are a lot of animals here, horses, dogs, chickens, and tons of wildlife. Oh, that sounds divine to me. <laughs> <laughs> you shared a great story with me about finding or helping to find a lost dog named Kong. Oh man, you have to share that. So can you walk us through that experience? I can. Yeah, it was, um, I think to date, it's still my most favorite animal communication experience, if you will. And it was totally unplanned, I guess, as most of them are. And um, this happened a couple of years ago now, about a year and a half ago. And prior to that, I had a little bit of experience with these missing pet cases, uh, starting with actually a pet, a dog of mine that went missing. And so that really opened up a whole new um, kind of excitement, you know, not excitement when dog was missing, but just the possibility of being able to connect with missing pets and reunite them with owners. And so one evening I was just kind of minding my own business, scrolling through Facebook and a post came up from a young girl I'd, I never had seen before, of course, and she was clearly desperate. Her dog had been missing for about a week. And at this point, so it was really close to Thanksgiving and around here, uh, the weather can already start turning very cold by Thanksgiving. And uh, initially I was was like, okay, this, you know, and that sounds not very <laughs> hopeful. And, but there was just something about this post that really held my attention. And she was begging for at this point, you know, anything helps, any information, any, you know. And there's also kind of a rule that, you know, with animal communicators tend to be pretty strict about, and that's, you know, the whole permission clause. Like you just, you don't dive in to someone else's stuff without their permission, stuff in this case being, you know, communicating with their pets. But at this point, I'm like, well, this is pretty, this is pretty much a broadcast permission here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with it. I'd say so. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I, I was hesitant because uh, my, my mind was like, that. there's no way, like this dog's probably a total goner. And I hate, you know, coming across stuff like information like that. But I tuned in and um, she like leapt into my awareness. And I was like, oh, gosh. Like, this dog is absolutely alive. Not only is he alive, like, he's still very uh, vibrant. And so that heartened me. And I kind of dug in and asked him some questions. You know, are you okay? Are you injured? Do you have any idea where you are? Stuff like this. And he just was, uh, he was just so excited to, you know, I guess, etherically see somebody. So the tricky part was, like, how do I contact this person and just out of the blue be like, well, hi, I, I'm and talking to your dog and he's okay and that's the, that was the that was really the hard thing for me because i never yeah. really reached out to anybody in this way but i did find a kind of a non-bizarre way to connect with her <laughs> she was very receptive and she, in fact we had a phone call later that evening and we we did a meditation in which and this is the way that i first uh, was introduced to this practice and it seems to be very effective with her and my kind of combined intention and like energetic presence, we were able to create kind of a, a like a beam. I guess the best way to describe it is like a beam of light that came directly out of like the house that she went missing from. And it wasn't her house, but it was um, where her boyfriend worked at the time. That's how this unfolded because it was kind of out in the country. And I kind of gave her the information 
that I had already gotten. And she was able to confirm a lot of certain things that, you know, he was telling me, like, he and this other dog went and ran off chasing a deer. And they went really far. They kind of lost track of where they were. And the other dog eventually made it home, but Kong did not. And he got really turned around, started going in the opposite direction, and wound up way far away. And so we kind of placed this etheric beacon of light, and I was able to ask him if he could see it. And he kind of, he started looking around. You know, it's funny explaining things this way because I see these kind of as like storylines in my awareness when I'm doing this kind of work, and, it, and it's constantly sort of changing. Oh, I'm trying to just explain it in the best way. Visualization, it does help, and the intention behind it, yeah. It does. So... The feedback I got was him just like immediately taking off in that direction. He must have been really a quite a ways away because he didn't show up until about another day and a half after that. And um, but he did he 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 did make it back there, which was amazing because kind of everybody was at the point where they just were going to give up and, and he didn't make it. And he arrived and he was of course very hungry, but he was uninjured his his feet were very very raw and um this was when she called and told me what that that they that she had arrived and that she went and picked him up it was just it was an indescribable feeling to me because well on a number number of levels i i was so humbled and honored to be able to help this then become reunited and even just you know, some of my own doubts that I still was sort of carrying around, even the idea of, of animal communication, because at this time, I, you know, I wasn't really seeing, you know, taking clients. It was just kind of something I would do for friends, and it was word of mouth. And it was really positive feedback for me. And it was like, I just settled into like, this is, I am not making this up. This is absolutely real. And it is so beneficial. And so that's kind of, in summary, that was a real pivot point for me. Oh, I can imagine like the the lady just putting all that faith when you're at that point where you're kind of desperate. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have to reach that point, <laughs> you know, and uh, it's unfortunate. But at the same time, it's like those are the kind of scenarios that kind of bring a light to animal communications. Because like you, I wasn't exactly a believer until I started fostering dogs. And I'm like, oh, I'm desperate for answers. And that was my rabbit hole into it. So that's amazing that you were able to help her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it also did really open up a window for her. And actually, she expressed this to me later. She's, you know, she was a little skeptical about certain, you know, not just animal communication, but, you know, the, the power of meditation and the, the way that we can maneuver in these, what I call right. these unseen places. And it really opened up the door for her. Oh, can't wait to touch on that. So we're just <laughs> going to have a quick break. <laughs> We're just going to have a quick break, and when we get back, we'll continue talking with Callie Kellum. Need the perfect gift for the cat lover in your life? Check out ComfortDiva.com. We have cat-tastic gifts to make you smile, like cat-themed tote bags, kitchen towels, quirky mugs, and stylish t-shirts. For holiday gifts or anytime, ComfortDiva.com has it all. Treat the cat lady in your life to something possum and save 20% with coupon MEOW20. Visit ComfortDiva.com today because every cat lover deserves a little comfort. ComfortDiva.com, where comfort meets catitude. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Welcome back to Save a Pooch. We are talking with animal communicator and intuitive Callie Kellum. Uh, so before the break, you were talking about your story. So now we're just going to pivot into more of the deeper aspects of this because it's a piece of a much, much bigger story. So you've mentioned that animals can offer us wisdom and, and guidance. Can you give us some examples of insights that you've received from animals apart from, you know, the missing cases? This, if we had days to cover I this. <laughs> I, I can it's imagine. <laughs> it's, you know, there's, I'm trying to kind of quickly go through the files of my mind for some of the dust examples. I mean, 
on what, I mean, even though it's significant on the surface level, I mean, we could even probably all agree that dogs can be our biggest teachers of love and forgiveness, Ooh, yeah. at least for me. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a dog person through and through. And um, the things that my dogs teach me about unconditional love, I, in, and I am so far from fully experiencing that as the human, but to watch what that means for them is, is so moving. And then examples like, yeah, I, I am, and I can only just kind of, you know, reference my own life. I'm a very busy, fast paced, um, constantly doing stuff kind of person. And it wasn't until I got a cat that I really started to become aware of Zen, like how just Zen and unbothered cats can be by just doing nothing. There's zero guilt. They just live in the moment. They love to be laying in the sun and they could nap all day long and it doesn't bother them at all. <laughs> so things like this, just even these simple lessons have really changed my perspective on my own life. You know, when I feel guilty for not getting enough done in the day, for example, it's like, why do I feel this way? Look at, I've got everything I need. Also, I could just take a nap in the sun right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll tell you, I, they're actually, it, that's kind of what I would consider pretty surface level stuff. But the, the kind of stuff right. that I've been yeah. digging into lately, and I don't even have to dig, it's just stuff that's coming forward in really powerful ways. I was in a session with a lady recently whose cat is approaching end of life. And there was some difficulty around some decision making with whether or not this lady should go on a trip, kind of an extended, that was like a two week trip. And she was having a lot of guilt because she felt like her cat might pass while she was away. And it was just really emotionally upsetting all the way around. And her cat came forward with the most beautiful message. And I had to, I wrote it down because it just was so succinct and profound. And she, the cat said, why are you giving away your magic to a place that does not exist? And that set me back on my heels because it's just pointing to, you know, real profound spiritual lessons that I think a lot of people are coming awake to, which is the power of our presence is really kind of the root where everything comes from as far as, well, not anything. I think, you know, anybody who's listened to Eckhart Tolle, for example, is kind of the pork rubbed in presence. And in Light Body Academy, we focus strongly on consolidating our energy fields. And this was such a beautiful way for this cat to outline, like, not just our power of presence, but she called it our magic. And the idea that, you know, especially overthinkers, and I have had this going on for me, it's like literally spending like the beauty of my presence in a made up place. And I'm seeing this happen. This right. is it's almost like a sickness when I look at it, it you know, for people in general. And uh, so it's messages like that that come through that are just like, like hard hitting one liners. And I just love this stuff. And they're, I'll tell you, it's usually cats. It's usually cats that have this, this stuff. And I, and I, and uh, I'm learning to be more of a cat person. And, and <laughs> it's maybe, it, yeah, it's just true. I've never been a cat person. Up until recently, because the stuff the cats are bringing forward on these like extra dimensional existential levels is really blowing me away. Yeah, I think uh, cats, like the way I see it, it's like cats, presents, dog, love, combine the two, and what do you <laughs> exactly. get? Exactly. <laughs> Throw a horse or two in the mix and you're basically <laughs> in heaven. <laughs> oh my goodness. So how do you think deepening our connection with animals can help us reconnect with one, nature, two, um, ourselves? and and I'm just going to give back this question to how has your work in animal communication affected your relationship with nature and your perspective on our role as humans on Earth? Because, man, yeah, I'm just going to let you go down this rabbit hole. Right. Wow. Yes. This is a really good question, Bev, because there's something happening with humankind that I think maybe hasn't ever happened before. And I'm going to speak specifically to screen time. And we're getting called out. <laughs> I am so guilty of this. And, you know, and all of this information coming out about the adverse effects of 
blue light from our screens and the way that it affects our literally the function of our minds and brains really play a detrimental role. And I'm not trying to demonize technology necessarily. It's the addiction that we have to this kind of stimulation. Sort of a pandemic of its own, to use a popular term, that is causing a very serious disconnect between humans and nature, and nature being in every form, uh, you know, even to the point of, you know, having our bare feet on the ground and taking time to look at the sky and just breathe fresh air and sit in the sun to, you know, actually unplugging and meditating on it outside, things like, things like this. So that being right. said, what I'm seeing happen in the animal kingdom that is just such a tremendous gift, and I, and I really do feel that it's happening on their behalf very deliberately, is I'm seeing them constantly offer opportunities for us to step into their energy field and 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 I'll and I should have prefaced this with yeah, animals live in the moment. They are so present. They are so, you know, time does not exist for them. You know, meal time might exist for them, but everything else is just life. And right. the moments that I personally take the opportunity offered to me by my dogs in particular to stop focusing on whatever this problem is or staring at the screen. And when I stop and pet them and connect with them and look in their eyes, I literally feel my energy fields start to shift. And let's say in the evening time, I'll take my dogs out to the pond here and we'll just sit and they'll play and splash. I'll have my feet in the water and I can feel and, uh, you know, probably in general, people would have to really try and tune into this. But because of the practices that we do in the Light Body Academy, I have become really familiar with how, you know, different energies in my body feels, et cetera. So that was just kind of a backtrack. But I know that when I'm spending time outside specifically with my animals, my nervous system settles down. You know, and there's tons of science behind how these things. Yeah, that's a big one. It's yep. like. Literally spending time with them grounds me. Yes, I could go out and take a walk and I would be able to ground myself, but I'll tell you, the difference is noticeable from time with myself outside as opposed to time with my animals outside, um, especially horses. Horses have huge, huge healing energy fields. And this is why there's so many healing centers that incorporate horses that autistic children yeah, I've and seen that. that's with PTSD and you name it. And I feel like the, this isn't by accident. You know, yes, it's a happy side effect of just animals being who they are, but I also feel this as an offering to get people more connected to nature because this is the time right now that we need it more than ever. I hope I didn't rabbit trail too much and take us off that subject matter. <laughs> nope, not at all. I completely agree with that message. And you bring it home. With trying to explain like how we are, we have this dynamic relationship between us and animals is a back and forth thing. And it is, and you do bring up a good point that reminds me that even in the evolution of humans, the animal kingdom is evolving because I'm seeing all these reels of uh, animals that are like predator and prey and they're getting along. I'm like, wow, I have it's, not seen this. <laughs> Something that happened. It is. It's interesting. <laughs> so many things are changing. And yeah, I see a lot of support. And, I, and I also, you know, I deal with. I'm totally connected to the insect world. I've been, I've loved creepy crawlies of all kinds ever since I was a kid. And I'll tell you, even the insect kingdom is coming forward in a really strong way, in a, in a similar way. And not everybody really takes the time to notice bugs. But those of us who do are getting in connection with nature in these ways as well. I think maybe deeper than ever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You totally reminded me of a story that my, my friend was telling me about her niece who who has, she's on the spectrum of autism. And my friend would laugh and she's like, she's the bug lady. And she would say that her niece would go outside fascinated with bugs and they would literally hang out with her. And inside, I'm like, that's not, that's not a fluke, that's man. That's so that's cool. That's actually energetics happening. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I love oh, that. Oh, goodness. So back to the furry animals. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to someone who believes they might have like a natural ability for animal communication? I mean, we all have it. I think with anybody who has 
any kind of intuition, which we all have. We all have the ability to connect with animals. But for someone who may be wanting to get into it more, what advice would you give to them? Foremost, I would say to anyone that feels like they've got kind of a special connection with animals and kind of can read their emotions and are interested in this and wondering if they have this ability, etc. <laughs> the first thing you need to catch yourself is when you start feeling self-doubt or self-criticism, or if, yeah. if you start to discredit experiences you've had, thoughts you've had, you know, if you want, if say an idea suddenly came into your head that was very dog-like and your dog was sitting there staring at you, catch yourself in those times when you want to dismiss that because that is the first pitfall. It'll stop someone dead in their tracks. And I know this because I've had to deal with a lot of this. Probably a lot of other people on this same journey would say something similar. So firstly, just be very gentle with yourself. And, you know, you're going to have many, many instances where you step back and you're like, am I making this up? And yes, sometimes we do protect things. That's a real thing. But the more you person practices and makes space for this and takes time, you'll you'll start to notice the difference between your thoughts projecting something and the energy behind, you know, an actual dialogue between you and an animal. And then the next thing is just give yourself space, make time to, to practice. And, um, and if you're really into it, I would highly encourage people to seek out some of these programs that help train people. Um, and there's some really good ones out there. And uh, I don't know if I would, I'm not really the, the go-to to uh, ask who, because <laughs> I really kind of forged my own path in this way. But um, if you're if you're interested in it, go for it, because you've got nothing to lose. And the likelihood of, you, you know, if you already feel like you've got this going on, it's just going to continue to develop and you're not going to regret it. Bingo. Yep, exactly. In fact, you know what? If any of you guys are interested, I do invite you to reach out to Kelly <laughs> because she's on her journey and she would be able to help you out. Not only in missing missing cases, although, you know, Kelly, I'm just going to put it out there with all these natural disasters oh. happening. There's a ton of yeah. demand on this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ton of demand on that. But yeah, so we are out of time. I really appreciate you, Kelly, taking the time. Thanks to our show producer, Mark Winter, for making this show possible. I encourage you to read more about Kelly and her work. The links will be in the show page. You Again, I'm going to mention it again because <laughs> I really love you. If you really want I, um, more information or even a private session, do reach out to her on a lot of the links on the show page. So if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for a show, please email me, Beverly at PetLifeRadio.com. So until next time, spread animal compassion. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.